Yeah, I'd like to call our, our January regular the board meeting to order. Um, roll call, please. Ryan Giese. Present. Cody Dubilski. Present. David Schmidt. Present. Ryan Mahan. Absolutely. And I am present. Most variable will stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And at this time, our virtue card, um, tonight's virtue card is going to be justice. Justice. Okay. okay, justice. Practicing justice is being fair. It is solving problems so everyone wins. You don't prejudge. You see people as individuals. You don't accept it when someone acts like a bully, cheats, or lies. Being a champion for justice takes courage. Sometimes when you stand for justice, you stand alone. You are practicing justice when you treat everyone fairly, think for yourself and refuse to prejudge, avoid gossip and backbiting, own your mistakes and fix them, protect people's rights, including your own, solve problems so everyone wins. Affirmation. I act with justice. I stand up for the rights of others and myself. I have no need to pretend or defend. I choose to make amends. Justice. 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 Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Uh, Board of Education guidelines. With an open mind, we will establish an atmosphere that allows expression of all views, even when views are not in line with all members. We will work collaboratively with the district administrator by having open and honest conversations around district priorities. We'll work collaboratively with all stakeholders to monitor key indicators so that equitable teaching and learning results in high achievement. We'll work toward building a trusting relationship where both students and staff can reach their full potential and celebrate successes in academics, the arts, and athletics. Um, at this time, uh, public comments. Uh, we need public here, guys. Come to the meeting so we can have public comments. Uh, at this time, we're, we're at, at showcasing schools and student learning. And we're very pleased tonight to have Mr. Paul be here with us this evening. And uh, just for those, each month we review the overarching results. And, and Mr. Lee here, kind enough to come tonight and share some of his, some of his work. So can yeah. I read the overarching results policy just real quick? Sure. The Acoustic School District develops students who excel academically, act responsibly, display good character and citizenship, and reason and solve problems rationally. We focus on preparing our students with the skills they will need in today's global community. So in that context, yes. I don't know, John, do you want to say anything before we get started, or can Paul jump right in? I think Paul can jump. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm going to talk a little bit about the work that has been done over the past, uh, since actually April I was here the last time to report. Um, before I get into that, so I gave you each a copy, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind you of the responsibilities of the long title is Family School Community Outreach Liaison. Uh, I'm identified in different ways in different places as well. Even on the website, I think it says community outreach liaison, which is great. But uh, the job description is there. I just want to remind us all of that, that the liaison creates, strengthens, and maintains the bridges between the family, school, and community. The liaison facilitates and provides leadership for the collaborative process and development of a continuum of services for students, families, and community members within the Nakusa School District community. And when I uh, took the job and started to think about how that might be implemented. Uh, I really think about it in, in three focus areas or buckets of work. So that's what the Venn diagram represents. Where the community and the school and the family, those interactions are. There's really three buckets of work. Uh, but before I get into the what uh, we've been up to the past year, I want to just remind us all about the why. It has to do with uh, what Terry just read there. Um, you know, the vision of the district 
is to empower all students to succeed in the global community academically, emotionally, and socially. And I thought about that, and it's almost like a rope with three braids, right? Three cords, it's that strong. And you need all of those to make the rope strong. And I would say one of the barriers that we would have, one of the barriers towards success in academics, as well as all of them, is that social-emotional piece. If, if those things aren't strong, the academics suffer as well. And one of the greatest barriers that we face in that area is of trauma. And the, the lives and the families of our students. And we all know the effects, I think, of trauma on especially children's brains uh, and the ability to learn. Trauma can take a lot of different forms. Um, you know, it can be uh, anything from abandonment to neglect. It could be uh, witnessing or suffering violence, something we're working to mitigate through our uh, Handle with Care program. Uh, incarceration of a loved one, we see that happen in our district. Uh, Systems-induced trauma that I'll call, such as removal from a home or multiple placements or separation from siblings, that's a real a reality that we face. Living in chaotic environments uh, or environments with inconsistent uh, financial or housing resources. And I, um, I don't know if you're aware, but the county puts out a report. In fact, the next iteration is due pretty soon. It's called the CHIPS report. And there's some really good numbers to know in there. I've leaned a couple just to frame this up so we understand that there, our, our students experience trauma on multiple levels. Poverty has risen in Wood County from 8% in 2006 to 11.3% in 2015. What that looks like on the ground for us, uh, eligibility for free and reduced lunch we know has risen dramatically. It was 35% in 2007 and last year was 53 percentage, right? So we know that that's increased. Um, other effects of economic stressors on the family, we see drug, drug addiction and trafficking is, trafficking is still a problem in our area. Uh, due to our um, location near the I-39 corridor, it's being centrally located. Our community, and I know this from rubbing shoulders with other chaplains, I'm a police chaplain as well. Uh, our community for a community size has far more drug activity than rural communities relative to our size that aren't located in, in you know, uh, Brian Mahana could talk all day about that kind of stuff. Um, trauma can, can lead to self-medicating behaviors. Uh, one of the, um, actually the focal point of the CHIPS report deals with that, especially in youth. Uh, recent, according to the CHIPS report, one in five high school students in Wood County will have had five drinks or more recently. So that's self-medicated. That's trying to deal with trauma at home the best way they can. And sometimes that leads to substance abuse. So trauma, we know then from the research, it interferes with the <coughs> children's ability to learn, to function properly, to lead uh, social and, and emotional and, and uh, academic. It, it, it just interferes with a lot of success, which is what we're all about, right? So that's kind of the, the why behind what I do in the work I'm engaged in. Um, the purpose really of all the activity of the, uh, the fiscal, the family school community outreach liaison, is to mitigate the effects of trauma in our students' lives so that they can succeed in all three of those areas, academically, socially, and emotionally. And that's really what I'm engaged in. And then I do that in these three buckets of work. So that's the why uh, behind the work that we do. I wanna go through uh, the report lists out a lot of the what's that I've been engaged in since April of last year. I'm going to walk us through that fairly quickly because I really want to get to some questions too if you have time for that. Um, and I'll highlight just a few. So I'm not going to read every bullet point because I'll, I'll expect you can read that. Um, one of the, the first bucket of work I want to talk about uh, is the community and school bucket. And this is um, really that, that area where that intersects uh, where I'm focusing my work on representing the school district in coalitions and other community-based organizations that impact the school district, right? One example, there's many here, you can see the various coalitions that I represent the district on. So I attend these meetings, the Hunger Coalition, the Homelessness Coalition, uh, Wood County Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Task Force, which I'm going to mention again here in just a moment. Uh, Stuff the Bus, Stuff the Desk, I sit on that committee. Love Inc. of Southwood County, I'm on that uh, board. 
and then I served through chaplaincy on the, on the CUSA Police Department. One of the things I want to highlight in this bucket of work is that handle with care piece, and I mentioned it. This was an initiative that was started uh, really in the beginning of 2018, so last school year, as a collaboration between the police department and the school district. We had, actually as a chaplain, I was on scene, or at part of the debrief team, it was a um, tragedy that happened uh, within our school district at home, and I was on the debrief team about a week after the event happened and found out that there were students in that home that we didn't know about. And talking with the chief of police, and we just said, boy, that's gotta change. We have to know these things. Mm -hmm. And so um, with the help of the police department, we were able to find a great program that exists in West Virginia, and we adopted it here. Uh, since uh, totally, I think we've had nine handled care reports. Since April, since I reported last time, we've had five. Uh, I can't remember how they broke, I think we had two or three this year and two of you for in April. Um, so what that looks like is if there's a, uh, um, an incident in the home of one of our students where the police are involved, it could be a domestic violence, could be a drug uh, thing that they're witness of, um, that we immediately get a report. Uh, and they have been, I would say, every time we, we've gotten a report and been able to interview the next day. And we're able to convene a meeting amongst the building uh, uh, counselors, whatever building that those students are in. We develop an action report, and then we email the teacher. And all as we tell them, they have no details. They just get a handle with care that says this student has witnessed a traumatic incident in their home in the past 24 hours. Just handle them with care, mm -hmm. a little bit of extra love. Mm -hmm. And if you see any behavior that's not typical for them, please let the counselor, Brian Grill, or me know, and we'll. We'll follow up with that. Uh, I'm happy to say, real recently, Brian and I were invited to join this Wood County Task Force on Child Abuse and Neglect. And one of the goals of 2020 for that task force is to take the Handle with Care and the CUSA model <coughs> and blow it up countywide. And so Sheriff Becker is behind it. Um, we've got the task force behind us. We're going to be sitting on that committee. And uh, between Sheriff Becker and I, we're going to be spearheading that effort to take that that handle with care county wise. So pretty proud that you know it was birthed here and we get to be a leader. And honestly, my goal is to see it go statewide. Um, so we're gonna be working that way. So that's one bit of work in that bucket. And you can read the other things that I'm involved in in the community school where those two things overlap. Uh, the second kind of focal area is uh, where the family and community overlap. And the work in this folk in this area focuses on connecting families in need with resources in our community. I would say this is kind of the social work piece, if you will. This is helping our families that have uh, real felt needs in their home, not sure how to navigate the social services systems or how to find uh, relief for whatever problems are going at home. And the problems, those, again, these are economic, usually stresses in our home that affect our kids. And they bring those things to school with them every day. And the better job that we can do at relieving those, those stresses in the home, the better equipped our students are going to be at learning and being better off socially and emotionally in the school setting. So uh, I won't get into all of these. I do want to give you just kind of one example. This shows you, uh, I almost thought about just giving you a day in the life of the fiscal of me, what it looks like. But this is a good example. I, I can't mention names, but we had a family uh, with several children who had experienced a traumatic event in the home that led to loss of employment, uh, and then the myriad of hardships that follow that, all right? Now, we were able to come alongside the family, and I have a list of just to show you the kind of supports that are needed in these circumstances. Uh, to, we helped them navigate the systems in place in our community, uh, Wood County Human Services, Love, Inc., the Rome Fire Department Holiday Baskets, the Backpack for Kids program, Sacred Hearts Angel Tree Christmas Gift program, Cleansing Waters uh, Laundry Ministry, you probably didn't know about that one. Um, and then individuals from our community. And then I just got a call today to help them figure out how to become foster parents. So all of those, that work has to be coordinated by someone. It just doesn't happen. And most people that find themselves uh, in these kind of hardships, they're struggling just to make it day to day. They don't have necessarily the time or sometimes the energy to pursue the, the solutions to their problems. And so um, over the past, since April, my caseload 
on this kind of situation has been nine families, but it's uh, more regular. You get odds and ends kind of calls, mm -hmm. like, hey, we need this right now. You know, so a lot of crisis calls. Uh, and we find these student or these students and these families either through referrals from teachers or our counselors or principals, uh, people who are in, involved in the lives of the kids. So we get referred to them through Brian comes to me and then we begin to work in these areas. So that's what that bucket looks like. And I, I, again, when I speak to people with the work I do, I would call that the social work piece. And then the final uh, area is where the family and the school uh, intersect. And that's that area focuses on engaging families. If the social work piece is more of a reactive, like we're reacting to the circumstances families find themselves in, this is the proactive piece. Okay, this is the piece and uh, trying to develop a curriculum uh, scope and sequence for parenting classes. So last year we ran our first um, uh, board learning academy. We had 10 families uh, uh, graduate from that. We're offering that again, that's a partnership, by the way, three partnerships mm -hmm. between us, the United Way and the Y. Uh, and great curriculum on the preschool end of it. So how to get their children ready to learn. And so it's, it's great information, helps them prepare. And then we actually take the information that evening, it's six weeks. And each evening, there's something that's presented on child development. And then they get a chance to actually go down and practice it with their kid for the last 15 minutes. So it's very practical work. Now we've got, we are running it again beginning February 4th for six weeks. Uh, it's free, and we provide a free meal to the families that come. And uh, right now, we've got six families signed up, but I know there's more coming. So I'm guessing we're going to be in that 10 to 12. In the fall, we also did a, uh, we're starting to do at Humpke some uh, uh, parent workshops. We did one on the five love languages of children. I don't know if you're familiar with the book. With the book. It just helps parents understand how their children gives, give and receive love and to be able to understand their child better. We did a one night uh, kind of just a workshop on that. Uh, we are going to do another workshop in February. Officer Cole is coming to do a workshop on uh, apps, you know, phone apps, what's, what are good apps and what are dangerous apps. And we've right. seen recently the effect of some bad social media, right? Mm -hmm. um, so again, this area of the work really focuses on parent engagement. How do we ramp that up? How do we get families involved in their child's education? And again, uh, creating that environment, uh, whether it be in the school or especially at home, uh, to create a success academically, emotionally, and socially. So there's, again, you can read through the other bullet points. There's other stuff that we've been involved in, but I just wanted to highlight one from each kind of bucket of work, and I didn't want to take too much time to do that. I really wanted to open it up if it's okay, Brian. If, um, you have any questions about the work that's being done and um, what does it look like, you know, the facts, that kind of stuff? Well, I just wanted to interject quick. <clears throat> I think it's something as a district and for Paul to celebrate, um, you know, with all the work being done um, <clears throat> with hunger, uh, trauma, poverty, you know, even if you don't see it or someone's not showing it, it's there, um, especially in Nakusa with low income. And they don't know about the resources or may not be aware of the resources. They don't know where to go as a district. And for um, writing the position, this is something that I think is, is very important. So I think it's something that we need to celebrate as a, as a whole. So thank you guys. Can I just say too, um, on that point, I was presenting at the uh, Wisconsin Rapids uh, Retired Educators Association. They invited me to come and talk. Because, and I'll kudos to the board for creating a position like this. This position, I'm an odd bird. This position doesn't exist. Well, in a good way. <laughs> this position doesn't exist in a, lot of, in a lot of school districts. And I had a school board member from another district say, we need someone like you, like that. We need some of this work to be done. So I just want to say kudos to the board and this district for having the foresight to know that what the causes are, to how we can help kids learn better, and it's mitigating those traumatic effects. Is there a way that, can we get that judge report 
and how do we get it? Absolutely, it's available online. It's okay. a fairly hefty document. Yeah. I think the, the last one, so the one I was citing, I think came from 2016 or 17. Okay. But I just was talking to Wooden County and uh, the next one's coming up here shortly. Very good. It's good reading. Uh, you want to send it to? Yeah, sure. I mean, I could access it, but if you have it. Yep, I've got it. I'll yeah. yeah, we'll do that. that. I really want to echo um, uh, Cody's Cody's points about the value of this within our schools, and you know I think Humpke the, the greatest impact we can have is in those early years, but we certainly do understand that it happens at other points. Have you been called to other other so, other specific yeah. schools? So the one example of the family that we serve, we sure. actually have children in all three schools. Oh boy. Um, and I hit most of that interaction with other schools has been through that, that bucket of work, the social work mm -hmm. bucket. Although, um, and I, I did spend some time at AMS talking with Nathan as I've been building out, you know, because in some ways we were building the job description or job as we were flying. Um, and I guess most of that interaction with the other schools has been through that that bucket of work, the social work mm -hmm. bucket. Although, um, and I I did spend some time at AMS talking with Nathan as I've been building out, you know, because in some ways we were building the job description or job as we were flying the plane. Mm -hmm. um, that's done almost. I would say I, I each of these buckets, by the way, I develop a hundred day work plan around. So there's a much more detailed document that I didn't want to, you know, burden you guys with. But there is very detailed uh, work, and all of that work is beginning to shift over to ongoing, where the deadlines used to be set this up, set this up, set this. A lot of that work is being done, so it's allowing me to branch out of some of these schools. I've been over at AMS. I try to get over there um, as often as I can. Uh, there's more work, and honestly, what I'd like to do is be able to sit down with Mr. Black and Mr. Johnson and say, okay, now we kind of know what this is, what might it look like for you, where are some gaps that you need some bolstering, and I don't know that. Those are discussions we need to have. Yeah. But I think we've got a meeting set up. Yeah, we, we're doing yes, a couple of weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah, just that's that, that next step. My, <coughs> my uh, dealings with uh, other board members from, from school districts around the state i'm hearing the same thing you just said that, that they need somebody like you as well in their school yeah. districts. when i uh um, researched before the position came about the best stuff i could find as close is it almost all of it's urban mm -hmm. so it's yeah. neighborhood schools that you know how urban schools are really tight around a, a very box mm -hmm. in the urban setting um, they might have a person that's doing this kind of work in that very, but almost nothing rural. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the epitome of a, it takes a village. Yes. So at what point do you reach your capacity? <laughs> that's a good question. In, in the social work part of it, uh, that can be, you know, people work is the most important work. I believe if you help people, you know, things come up along. But people work can be the most inefficient work because people are complex and solutions are not easy. The right way to do things is not always easy. It takes, it's complex. These are complex issues. Um, you know, I don't know, I don't really know that. I don't think I'm at like the caseload I have now isn't, I, I, I would have room, but depending on what other programs or areas we want to grow, like how you add more cases than the limits, how much more I can do for AMS, you know, these other areas. Right. Right. So it's really kind of a, it, it's it's a moving kind of target. Um, and it's not easy to pinpoint. Uh, so I don't know what capacity wise, um, I don't think I'm there yet. You know, there's still some uh, stuff I'd like to see done. But I also believe in building teams and passing responsibilities off to people. So one of the other things here I didn't talk about is volunteerism. Uh, we're tracking, I'm tracking very closely volunteerism at Humpke. I could tell you it's an impressive amount of hours. We had 50 plus volunteers last year. I track and log those minutes. 
And it's something like 1,500 hours that we had last year in volunteerism just at home. Um, so that's a full-time person. Yeah. Um, so, but as we develop volunteers uh, in some of our parent organizations like HIPPO, I would like to see take some more responsibilities just beyond fundraising and that kind of stuff to actually running volunteering in the school. And if, if you can pass them up, then you can still build more capacity in the system. Does that answer your question? It does. I okay. can just see that this is just a, it's going to be continuously developing. <laughs> I, I think so. It, it shifts around. I would, you'll get a good framework. I think we have a framework going. Oh, yeah. But where that you know, work is shifts around the framework yeah. because it's people. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have thank other you. questions? No. I, mean, I just want to say thank you, Paul, and yeah. thank you for for your time here and that comment about it takes community. I think that was so key because it, we can't do it all. And you know, your interface with the other groups and organizations within the within the county and within the state is so beneficial. And the more we can integrate with those community resources, and the more those community resources can work with us, the better off we are. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the time. For being here. And we actually are very fortunate to have a Father-daughter team. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a nice plaque, though. He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> the honorable. The honorable. <laughs> yes, the honorable Eleanor. But before we get to Eleanor, I must yield the floor to Mr. Brian Gurel. I believe. No, nope, she's no. not next. Oh, I don't know. You got a girl. You are going to appreciate it. Thank you, God. Um, so this week and next week, uh, student council is going to be working to give um, all the high school students a like goodie bag for the semester ending and into the new semester. Um, we don't have finals anymore. I still think of like semester ending as finals time because that was my freshman year. So I'm still thinking about that, but we don't have that anymore, which I'm grateful for. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, the school or the events committee under student council is working on getting a dodgeball tournament again in the high school. So that is hitting the ground and running within the next few weeks. Um, I believe it's somewhere in the middle or of March or February. I'm not really sure when. Um, and then we have four different committees that I'm pushing them all to do something um, be before spring break is here so um and then we're going to work with you guys soon to get into the high school and talk about the referendum oh good and we do have a date set for that we do yeah, well, well here's the date for the referendum you guys okay well, great you looking at me yeah yeah, yeah he's looking seems at me. like you guys maybe would have a date <laughs> yeah we were contacted by miss miss uh Hearn. yes and she did provide us a date. Yes. Um, so I don't. I gotta make sure that's not my turn. that out over. Yeah. Do you have to <laughs> oh. catch me by surprise? Are we, are we all supposed to be here? <laughs> well, I think it was. As many as you know, I could probably be there. I think it was going to be just a presentation on, you know, what the referendum yeah. was and just the things. Yeah. Um, but if you guys could be there, I think, you know, we have their, we have the audience, yeah. and yeah, if they can hear from all. Facets. You know what the date is? I don't think I have it on my calendar. I would like to be present for that. Oh, okay. I'm working with a lot of athletes there. So. That's great. I'll find it here. There's been so many dates going around. It's yeah, that's true. Mm. There it is. So like the meeting February 7th during advisory time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Email Eleanor for more questions. So what time is that? Is that going to be the whole student body? Yeah, it's 9.30 to 10. 9.30 to 10 on February 7th. We're looking forward to that. February 7th. That doesn't even interrupt my day. That would be impressive to have the board there. Yeah. 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 So thanks for bringing it up. Where, where is the advisory hill? We're going to be in well, the auditorium. This will be in the auditorium. Yeah. Correct. And yeah, they don't want to assume. And I certainly, you know, the referendum is going to be the key thing, but, you know, if we do have the board there, I think it's 
for the school body to learn more and understand more about what we do, or yes. that would be an ideal time, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I'll, that would be a fantastic guys if we could do that. So thank you for providing leadership on that. Uh, yes. Yep. Good job. And upcoming events, you mentioned Dodge Hall. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. And the new semester is starting. New semester is starting. Congratulations. Oh, that's crazy. Is that halfway there? <laughs> You're halfway there? Yeah. How does it go by so fast? It seems like we just started. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I feel like it was just so deep into uh, homecoming week. Mm. Well, that's over. Yeah. I mean, so, Ellen, I'm curious what you're putting in these little bags. Have you done? Have they done this before? These no, they bags? haven't. Um, I think we're putting like pencils. I really want to put stickers in them. Uh, some like candy, like Smarties, um, and then I don't know. I don't just we have a few other. Yeah, yeah, a few other tiny things, but everyone in the school should get one. So, Ellen, do you do you do you know if they have an account? With them? Uh, Holly Wholesale? No, I don't. Because stuff is really cheap there. Alright. It's down in the Dells. I mean, even if you have to go pick it up, but I think they would like to live. They probably have the bags already packed, do you? No, we don't. I know. Well, I might ask probably a little late for this. Yeah. You could still get it if you wanted to, I think. Alright. I mean, it's Holly Wholesale. But I will go to the Dollar General. What's that? Buy a local go to the Dollar General. Oh, that's going to be cheaper. <laughs> Buy a real local and go to the school nutrition department. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got that. A solution. Good luck with that decision. Hi. Beavers. Beavers. Yeah. I'm just There's saying. Not, not even a name. Very local. It's Beavers. Name yeah. every store. Yeah. 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 Okay. A lot of candy. Your sourcing yeah. options are. Oh, yeah. 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 Eleanor, thank you for what you bring to the board. A breath of fresh air. Was there anything else that you would like to share? Oh, we just want to thank you for being here. It's kind of special to have a, a father daughter team here. So, thanks again. Pretty special. Mm-hmm. More special than the next guy, Brian. Um, <laughs> Mr. Grill, our director. <laughs> our director. Of, it's a hard act to follow. It is it's a hard act to follow. But, <laughs> they uh, are wonderful. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Mr. Grill, your time, sir. Um, the main thing I want to highlight this month, so upcoming on Wednesday, February 26th, is our Child Development Day over at the Nakusa Community Center from 9 to 6 p.m. Um, I want to encourage all families because it's jointly done with 4K and 5K registration, but this is if you have a child that's two to three years old as well. And you just want to do almost like a well check to make sure they're hitting their developmental milestones. We have different stations to check their hearing, their vision, their speech, and just different developmental areas. So please bring your child in because kind of like we've always said, we want to make sure we're helping our students as early as possible. So if everything's on track, we'll tell you, yep, everything's looking good. If there's an area where you could work with your child or if we see a need for us as a school to help with your child to intervene early and help you as a family, we want to be able to do that. So how best to communicate with us, because you do have to set up appointments, because we do have to make sure we have enough staff to make sure we can screen your child. Just call Tiffany at the Humpke main office anytime during school hours, but you can schedule an appointment from 9 to 6 p.m. And we are... Also, as part of this, we have community members come in and there's tables around. Paul's always there on behalf of Hippo and Humpke Elementary, but then we also always have, um, this year a new one, we have the dental office your daughter works with. I can't remember the name. Dr. Dr. Carla McDonald. Dr. Carla McDonald. Yep, River Hill Dental will be there to talk about, you know, teeth care with your children. Um, Brian Mahan last year had flyers out there for Little League. We really want families to know the opportunities had starts there, WIC is there. We have different community resources so families are getting connected early as well if they need any of those services. So, and we just want them to get connected to our community. We want them to know Nikus is a place where we care about your child and we have 
sports opportunities, play opportunities, and different things for you to get connected as a family. So I just encourage families, please come out. You know, it's a good way, like I said, just to see where your child is developmentally and get connected to our community. So will you say the date again? And sure. It's, it's, it's February 26th. It's yep. held at the community center. And it's just a really fantastic opportunity. A lot of our, our dedicated staff are over there, the best of our best, yep. are over there. And it's just, you know, an opportunity to see where your child is, to see what services our community has. Mm -hmm. And the, the good thing about our district, and, and it really helps you set yourself on track to where you know your kids are. are. And mm -hmm. um, it's a resource that, you know, you're foolish not to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And again, to reiterate, to make those appointments, to contact uh, the Tiffany to the arrangement at, at, at Humkey Elementary. And I just can't uh, reinforce enough that it's a good day, a fun day for families to go there. And yep. um, I see the best of our best go over there. So I, I've witnessed that and yep. it's a resource to take advantage of. Yep. And I want to give a special shout out. Thank you because always the high school provides um, volunteers with National Honor Society to come play with kids as they're waiting for their next rotation. So we always have a Lego tower building competition with the kids that they love. But then to our police department has a station where they do a, a parent, kind of like if your kid were to go missing or things like that, where they give them a voice recording, picture, things like that. So in the event, we hope that never occurs for any child, but they give them this nice little packet of so that way, when you talk to the police department, you have all those things on hand. So a lot of community work goes into putting this event on. So I want to thank everyone that helps us put this together. Thank you, Brian. Is that it? That's it. That's an easy month from you. I mean, I, oh, that... just wait till my next Oh, break. <laughs> I thought we were so lucky. I know that I think the next subject is going to be a tough one, but no, Lynn, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, read, <laughs> I, I, read my, I read my book, I read my book, I didn't bring it along, um, but I, the floor is yours. Okay, name. well, we have fun in the business office, too. Okay. <laughs> Every month around July, the end of July, we just have a real good time with those auditors. <laughs> so um, we had new auditors this year. Uh, we. Uh, contracted with Clifton Larson Allen LLP and it was a bit of a rocky start which it always is when you have new auditors come in they have to get used to your procedures where things are um, they have to uh, probably understand small school districts where you know we don't have a person to do every little piece of internal control so um, it was a there was, it was growing pains I guess I'll say um, so they completed uh, their their work in July, August, September, October, November, and they finally got done in December. So we got the re audit report in December, and I did um, distribute that to you. Um, there were just a few things that I wanted to note. Uh, the general fund in the audit report is consists of two funds. It's the special education fund and the general fund, and that's basically the operating funds. That's what the um, school district runs its instruction on. So uh, special education fund is by law to have a zero fund balance at the end of the year. So basically what happens because there's you know a lot of expenses in special education with not a lot of revenue. So what happens is the general fund has to do a transfer into the fund 27 to make it zero. Um, and so the general fund is uh, had a, a decrease of about $1,200 last year um, as the ending, um, as we ended the year. So that was good news. So there's good news in the business office and then there's some not so good news. Um, the second item that I wanted to talk about was our um, short-term borrowing. Uh, this year, this in eighteen nineteen, we had to increase short-term borrowing by $300,000. So we went from 1.6 million to 1.9 million. Um, and uh, typically with a district, the way we are funded, because we are so heavily reliant <coughs> on taxpayers, is um, our cash flow is what really kind of screws us up. So in 
typically in November and December, our cash flow is really, really, really low. And we usually utilize every dollar of that 1.9 million just to make it through to January, where we're now getting our tax payments in. So, we so have to borrow money mm -hmm. and we pay short term interest on it. Correct, correct. And that's a cost to the district. It is, it is absolutely a cost. So, um, the way I'm, I'm looking at our fund balance, because we have a fund balance of just a little over $3 million, in order to eliminate our short term borrowing to even out our cash flow, we would have to have a fund balance of at least $5 million or even more. So, we're quite a ways away of. Um, of ending our short-term borrowing. Um, so, and it it's funny because there are other districts that are like us um, that have a fund balance of maybe $3 million and have the same type, type of dynamics. However, they may be 75% funded by the state and only 25% funded by the taxpayers. So their cash flow is a little bit more even throughout the year and they don't have to borrow as much then. So, it just it just kind of happens the way Nakusa is where we have to short term borrow. So another thing I want to bring up is um, when the auditors complete their audit, they, um, it's called a single audit, and what they do is they look at all of our grants, and if we exceed a certain dollar amount in the revenue that we receive in grants, I think I believe it's seven hundred thousand dollars, I believe, um, then they have to go in and say okay. Um, we have federal grants and we have state grants. And now we really have to dig into some federal grants because we have to make sure that you're following all the internal controls and everything like that. So it's a deeper dive. They also have to do that for state grants. So for the federal grants, um, the deeper dive, what they did is for uh, Title I and the Child Nutrition Cluster. So they really looked at every single thing that was happening in those grants. They looked at internal control, they looked at revenue, they looked at expenses, they did analysis, they did a ton of work. Um, and I was happy to say there are no findings in there. So then they looked at the state side and they looked at our special education state aid and they looked at our general state aid. And they did all the deeper dives in that and there were no findings there. So then for the rest of the grants that they don't do deeper dives in, they actually just look to see if everything looks reasonable. Um, so as they were looking at my transportation, um, there was a couple of red flags that came up. And um, it, this has happened in the past, and that's why I'm so embarrassed to say it, because what happened is uh, I get a report from transportation, and I ask Safeway, I said, give me all the kids that rode the bus. I only want the general education students that rode the bus. The special education are funded differently, so I don't want the special education. So she gave me a report, and I did not really dig into it, and I didn't look into it, so I reported to DPI the report that she gave me. Well, we changed computer software systems at Safeway, and it included all the special education students in there. So basically, we got funding over here from special ed, and we got funding over here from the special ed. So we kind of double dipped. So that was considered a finding. So um, DPI, or the auditors, did rate me up on that, and they did submit that to DPI. Um, I have not heard from a response from DPI yet, but it is coming. And typically in these situations, I'll get a phone call, and then I will have to um, provide an explanation as to how it's going to not happen in the future. And then I probably will have to send them a couple of reports just to prove that I am looking and you know reviewing and making sure that I am following up on it. So it's kind of a, you know a, a slap, you know, and you know can kind of figure it out. But I'm glad they did that because. It makes me look at the reports more closely. So, um, so we did have one one day. Um, so, other than that, the auditors did uh, provide an unqualified opinion, which means it's a clean opinion. So that ding didn't really affect our clean opinion. It basically means that the finances of the school district on the uh, items that they looked at represents fairly in this financial report. So. Everything, um, they're comfortable with how the district is represented financially. You're supposed to say that with a little more joy because you're very proud of that. Well, you know how I am, though. It's I a know perfectionist. How I am. But uh, one finding in the complexities of school finance. So. And it was just a computer caused the problem. It was stupid. That's, that's just, that's just call okay. what it is. <laughs> okay. Good job. So um, I do need a, a board approval to. Um, 
supposed to say that with a little more joy because you should be very <laughs> proud of that. Well, you know how I am, though. It's I like know how you are, and... but uh, one finding in the complexities of school finance. So. And it was just a computer caused the problem. Yeah. It was stupid. That's, <laughs> that's just, that's just <laughs> call it what it is. <laughs> okay. Good job. So um, I do need a, a board approval to um, approve the 1819 fiscal audit report. So I would like to call for a motion to approve the audit report as presented. Second. And we have a first and a second. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, and then we are going to move on to open enrollment space availability. Good to hear from me again. Well, you had your chance, Brian. <laughs> you did it again, though. You just I can't know. get enough of it. <laughs> All right, what I'm passing around is every year in January, because before open enrollment season starts on February 3rd, we have to discuss whether you as a board would like to set caps for our students with disabilities. Um, we have been doing this every year since I've been here, so the last four years. Um, and what I do every year, I calculate what the current enrollment is according to building and disability category to say, here's the space that is currently being occupied and I roll everyone up to the next grade and figure out how many units are going to be available. Um, there's good news in looking at this, but there's also some downsides to it as well. Um, the good news is if you go to the very last page of this document, there is the current open enrollments out and current open enrollments in. So right now in looking at students with disabilities, we do have more students that are open, open enrolling into our district than we do have open enrolling out. So that's good news that it appears our families are happy with the services that we are providing special education wise and staying with our district, which is good to see. Um, but due to the number of families we have in our district and the number that are receiving services, looking at the all the pages current before this, so every page where I calculate, if you go down to the very last column where it says space for open enrollment based on need calculations, so that last column of every table, all but one says zero units available. So I would say all of our special ed case managers were at capacity. So <clears throat> I know we, if there are students looking at our district, we like to say, hey, you know, we're a good, we are a wonderful district. But the challenge is we, for the number of staff we have available, we are working at capacity. So there's one area where we do have some open seats available, and that's at Alexander Mills School in our program for students with intellectual disabilities. So that's the one area we do have some units open. What's, what's lacking <clears throat> the capacity is just having another person on staff basically for more enrollments is um that, is that the big certi a certified, certified teacher so for some of our two you will see with like i'll just point out for example like um, our high school intellectual <laughs> disabilities for example if you look at the number of units there like it's one to 34 units for a teacher, mm -hmm. which that seems really high over the recommended caseload. Right. And that's where we provide educational assistance support to help that teacher throughout the day. Because it's the teacher can handle the caseload piece, it's just some of the student sure. needs, she needs additional help. And that's right. where we talk about, do we need educational assistance, things like that. Okay. But the only way we would open up more seats is by adding special education teachers. This is just for know, open enrollment, right? Just for open enrollment, though. Yes. Yeah, so enrollment. if a student moves in, of course, we have to accept them as a student with a disability okay. and provide services. This is solely for open enrollment. Is that something where that our referendum is going to help to take care of if we get the referendum passed? 
Right now, in looking at the referendum, we're not looking to add additional special education staff, teacher-wise, because our teachers that we have, we have a little bit, they're either right at the caseload recommendation or a little bit over. We're meeting the student needs of the students that are here. We, like I said, we do have some education assistance support there, but we're meeting the needs of our students with disabilities as it's written in their IEPs. So, and I remember when you came, you did a you did a pretty in depth analysis of our resources and, and our capacity and what we could look at, and it was very difficult. I believe it was a second year looking at those numbers where we had to put a cap on it, mm -hmm. and that was difficult. But we also have to ensure that we're able to serve our students adequately, mm -hmm. and and not and also be fair to our teachers and the resources that we have available. Yeah. Because and there's requirements as listed by the state for. What, 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 are, what we have to provide. Mm -hmm. and what, if we don't have it, we can't do it. Correct. But it's important to note, too, that these are kids that are, are not residents. Right. So we, don't, we do not get funded the full amount of any teachers that we hire. I think we only, is it 13000 or 12000 that we receive? $13,000 $13, is all we can claim the other districts. So if we have to hire an aide for forty five, mm -hmm. including salaries and benefits, we don't recoup that at all. Mm -hmm. So then we mm -hmm. eat it. And that's why we've really put these yeah. limits in place. Mm -hmm. So we're, the cost, we're good, so. what we're looking at is maintaining the limits that we have, the existing limits that we have set, which were pretty, yeah. pretty because of, oh, go ahead. They were pretty generous to begin with. Yeah. Well, and Lynn and I, sorry not to cut you off, we've worked hard to add our maintenance of effort. And if we just have students keep if we have students entering our district and we just keep adding staff, adding staff, our maintenance of effort that we've worked to maintain and lower actually a little bit is going to start going up again. Right. And the so, maintenance of effort is ba the state basically saying you have to spend the same amount that you spent th last year, you have to spend it this year. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a valid reason for reducing expenses. So we have to, it, it is a balancing act. It is, is terrible. So it, it, there's a lot of different variables attached to that. Mm -hmm. so. But we still try to serve every student's needs. Correct. And yeah. open enrollment for our general ed, we still have seats here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Well, I, I was just thinking, you know, so this is a, this does not affect our resident. No. Correct. That's we nice. serve Correct. all kids in Nicosia. Right. We are in Nicosia right. School District. Right. So, and, and that was the thing that I, I don't know if yeah. Cody or Dave mentioned that are we serve, are, are we meeting the needs of our residents at least? Mm -hmm. So we're doing that part. Yeah. And we're just saying we're sorry we don't have room for your child. Correct. At this point. Yeah. Except at the middle Except school the, one right, area. Right. The yeah. one area where there's seven point yeah. four. Okay, that's all I need. Yep, so okay. like if Good. you're a resident, if you're a resident of Nakusa too, and we suspect there's a potential disability, we evaluate, and if they qualify, they receive services because they're a resident of the school district. Okay. So. And it used to be where, you know, if we had a, a student with special needs transfer into the district, it used to be we could bill the whole full cost of that student to the other district. Then the state came in and says, nah, you're not doing that anymore. We're capping it. 13000 is the all that you can spend. And then we're like, well, wait a minute. How how are we going to... Uh, Provide those we can, Yeah, we yeah. can't deny anybody then. So then yeah. they implemented these caps. So it kind of balance that out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's all about the already right. dollar. Yeah. 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 Hard to say. <laughs> all right. Okay. But uh, you, you want to keep the existing caps, and that's where the yeah. motion that we'd like to see right yeah. now it's up to you guys yep. but that would be my recommendation just so that way we can maintain with the staff that we have and we don't have to add additional staff right now i, I that would be my recommendation i'll push right. that motion i'd like to call for a motion on cool. the open open room and space availability we have a first second we have a second all, all in favor please signify by saying aye aye opposed motion carried thank you mr girl thank you thank you Ann. And next, we are going to move towards educational options. Yes, yeah, so in front of you, you have 
uh, pursuant to state statute, every year we have to come before the board and share the educational options, all right? And that is making sure that our public here knows that there's other options out there to be educated. So that is out there on our website and that's listed here. Also, we need to share our accountability report, which just came out. We've talked about that in depth, the report card, and then the special needs scholarship program. And um, I think, well, Brian went over that last year, but also for like open and rolling out or moving to a different space, having a new, a different option. Do you want to just in a real quick nutshell, talk so, a little bit about what that means? Every year we put this notice in there so families know if a family is looking at for their child to attend a private school setting, a student that's in special ed currently here. Currently here, a student with a disability looking to attend a private school site. Uh, there is a scholarship available where we as a district would be paying that bill. If they look at it, though, there are requirements to apply for this scholarship. And part of it would they would have to look at a minimum of three other districts and apply for open enrollment and be denied prior to even being able to look at this scholarship option but you know and two the private school they need to be looking at needs to be certified by the state to say that they as a school would be able to provide services as outlined in the student's IEP. In this area we do not encounter this much because the closest school district or private school environment that is part of this program is actually in Wausau. So and parents would still be responsible for getting them to school, driving them to school back and forth. This is a option that is utilized, I would say, in more, like you were saying earlier, Paul, more urban areas, because that they do have a lot more schools that are hiring on special education teachers to provide those services. But right now in our area, we have to make families aware. But I'll say, since I have been here, we have not had a family pursue this option because it's not like um, one of the private schools in Rapids because they haven't gone through the process to be qualified to receive those scholarships yet. So, okay. so the, these three items call for approval, board approval. At this time, I'd like to call for a motion on educational options and a uh, special needs scholarship program in the 1819 accountability report. Mm -hmm. so we have a first, we have a second. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Next on uh, agenda, we last month we discussed the the referendum, the resolution for referendum, and when we reviewed it with the the legal area, we were required to change the order in which our questions appeared on the ballot and to be in line with the legal requirements, we have to review and approve that again here tonight. Uh, so it's all the same information, just, different just a different order. Question number one will be regarding the operational referendum, um, not to exceed $2 million per year. Um, for five years, non-recurring, and that's to maintain and 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 provide the services that we need for our students. Um, the second question has to do with the uh, capital improvements for those items that were identified through the survey process. The you know pretty exhaustive survey and recommendations on what our community felt was important and. We as a board um, made that resolution in, in December, and we're simply at this point um, just noting that question number one will be the operational, and question number two will be the capital. And if I could, I'd like to, uh, any comments or discussion points? At this time, I'd call for a motion to approve that change. So, we have a first and a second, and a uh, roll call, please, sir. Cody Wadilski. Yes. David Schmidt. Yes. I vote yes. Brian McClellan. 
Sonho de Jesus. Yes. I saw a motion carry. Very good. Thank you for that. And as mentioned in the December meeting, these uh, referendum issues are, are so critical to our district mm -hmm. for the things that we are discussed so far this evening and that any the the, the uh, governance uh, policy discussion that we're going to be moving into. This is just so important to us as a district. We're going to be working very hard. Um, we need this as a district. Uh, okay. I skipped right over something here. Nope, you're in good shape. We're in the R2. How come I didn't get any oh, yeah. of our... Oh, they're not on here. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah, we need to cover our governance policy. Um, our governance policy, where is your OE7? Um, I want to call those. Let me pick those up here, guys. Just one moment. Your agenda's right up there. Thank you. Policy governance. The first item that we're going to discuss on policy governance is R2, academic performance. And this is essentially we looked at our state report card and we unpacked that, that state report card. I'm very excited to say that the school district of Nakusa as a whole exceeded expectations. Yes. It's a reason to celebrate. Um, a lot of work went into that. Um, as we unpack the, the, the report cards, um, we did breakdowns on the school. Um, can you look at, can I look at the policy for R2? Yeah, can you want me to read it again? Would you please? Sure. Just a summary. Yeah, all students, this is academic performance and application, all students, regardless of their race, gender, disability, and their socioeconomic status will be literate in reading, language arts, and math. All students will be able to integrate and apply the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and competencies acquired across all academic disciplines. Thank you, Terry. Um, we had a very robust discussion on, in the board workshop on Thursday. And in summary, Again, we need to celebrate that as a district, we exceeded expectations. And when we bring it, break it down into schools, which, you know, this is public information and, and, and we want people to, to know and understand what's going on in our schools. And we, is there any comments that anybody would, you know, uh, John, Keith, would you like to? Just a few quick points on the high school. And I report card, we were yeah. um, well, we were very excited. I mean, we were the the highest rated high school in the county and in our athletic conference. Um, had some great growth scores when we looked at ELA, especially with ELA was really strong, which is certainly indicative of a lot of hard work that's been going on there over the last um, several years. And then. Uh, you know, also, I think with math, the changes that we've made, you know, we're going to be seeing continued growth there. So we're very happy with the report card. That's a, a very good point when you talk about trends. This little picture I'm holding up here is a trend chart comparing us to school districts within our conference, as well as uh, trend charts of schools within our regional area. And I'm very pleased to say that our trend is up, up and up the last three years. And the other schools, with the exception of one, Terry, correct? With the exception of one school, we're the only school trending up. Is that a correct statement? Well, I think we we There's, looked at like uh, what Toma has been. This people have been all over. They've been right? all over. But districts have been, but yes, our scores certainly we were at meeting expectations, and now we've gone and, to exceeding. And the fact that you know we were able to see that growth over the last three years is just enforcing the. Work what the work is being done. And I'm not going to be able to, in the time we have available, I'm not going to be able to give justice to the unpacking of data that was in these reports. Um, the 
we did we did suffer a little bit at Humpke, but we must remember that we only test one class at Humpke, and it's really hard for one class to be representative of an entire school. Um, that's just the way it falls. A lot of a lot of elementary have a fourth grade included. Am I correct in saying that? Fourth and fifth grade. Yeah, you know, every district sets up their elementary and how they format. So it's kind of unusual only have one grade, one grade of who's being assessed in that. Yep. So we don't have the benefits of having seen the growth. So our measures are very susceptible to that individual group of students at that point. Yep. And but I think based on that, can I go yes. ahead? I also but based, want, would you also comment on our internals versus the external measure? Is that sure. clear? Yeah. Well, and maybe John can talk about. The, the benchmarking that's going on at the elementary, but based on the score, we also want the world to know the work that's going on there. So maybe you want to just talk a little bit about the work that the ongoing work and having uh, sure our friends come in from other schools and really yes, thank help you. and sh help share their ideas on what they're doing and giving us some insight on what we might try differently to to make improvements. Well, anytime you feel like, oh my gosh, that was disappointing, you always got to start to ask yourself, okay, what is going on? You know, and that's a question that you know we as a staff has been exploring, and we're we're part of a, a network to say um, it's called Partners in Comprehensive Literacy, and in that network of schools, we spend time really learning about best practices in the area of literacy and finding out what we need to do. Um, so through that network, where there's a couple of professionals who've done some uh, excellent work in one of those schools in our member group, they consistently just exceed expectations. So it's kind of like, all right, what are you guys doing and why aren't we doing that and why haven't we figured that out yet? So along with that individual from that school and a member who was the director of our, it's called PCL, Partners and Comprehensive, they came in and really did an assessment and the name of that assessment is e-sales or just letters for an acronym that means basically how are you guys doing on literacy so and with that right now they go through with a fine-tooth comb and they're looking at instructional practices and things that we're doing and from that we basically take that information we synthesize it and we've gotten to the point right now that was in December we they came in and did that we synthesize it we've shared it with our literacy team and they're using that to continue the work now at the same time the work that we are doing is right we just still have more work to do and some things to figure out and learn and grow in. And that's where we're at right now. And that's in the area of literacy, which is a key measure at elementary school and every school. And that, you know, again, I think some of this work, some of the work that's being done goes over into one of the other operational expectations we discussed tonight with the instructional programming. And that you are actively addressing that as a, in, you know, the dedicated teachers that you have in your building and certainly the time that you spent on this um, is, you know, responding accordingly. And, and it's not necessarily in response to that test for you. You were doing it before those tests were came out. I think that's a fair statement too, isn't it? It is. And we, and we have, you know, with that, then we have systems to monitor student growth and act on it and provide interventions to make sure that all kids, all kids are served. And, it, and we're working to that, that vision of having you know, all students by the time they leave Hunky. It's not necessarily in response to that test score either. You were doing it before those test scores came out. I think that's a fair statement too, isn't it? It is. And we, and we have, you know, with that, then we have systems to monitor student growth and act on it and provide interventions to make sure that all kids, all kids are served. And, it, and we're working to that, that vision of having you know, all students by the time they leave Hunky. Be proficient academically, yep. and that's what we're working towards and trying to create those systems. And it is compound, complex work. And it takes sometimes three or four years, and I think that was presented for these things to really take. Is that a fair statement for the new, the new styles or the you know the the, the skill sets to really become ingrained? Is that a fair statement? Um, you, you know, you're really teaching st you know, staff new practices. So three or four years. And honestly, you know, that's probably at a minimum. Um, I would say it probably, you know, given that and the fact that you always want to retain your best teachers and continue to work on and develop those, it is a work in progress. So it, it does take at least three to four years. And we, you know, I think, you know, that presentation last week and the work, I'd, I'd like to say that we as a board, I, for myself, um, I think there's an opportunity for improvement with that score, but the work that's being done, I'd like to celebrate. Um, along with, you know, the work that has been done at the high school and at the 
middle school. Um, we're gonna we we are on we're on the right track, you know, and to see that trend line go up. Whenever you're trending up, you're going in a good direction. It's better than the other way around. And I'm certainly the other districts in our conference are certainly having different discussions on this subject than we are. So, yeah, you know, I'm just, I just thought of something. I think it's really important too, as you unpack those, the report cards, if you look at our academic, academic achievement across the district, we are really working hard to create those tier one classrooms that are spot on with giving kids what they need to be successful. But that tier two, that the referendums asking for more support and help to get those kids that aren't being successful with some intervention, that is going to play a huge part in really moving the needle on that academic achievement. Because our teachers, our staff is working extremely hard, right? So that's gonna be something that we can take that message out and show here's what we're able to achieve. We need more help. And we've identified that need and, and yeah, that's something that that referendum is just absolutely necessary for, for us to continue to provide that level of yeah. service. Um, but a good, good, uh, that's something we can draw back to in our conversations with our stakeholders. And, you know, as we look at these policies or this art, our one, we want to look at the strengths. We want to look at weaknesses, opportunities for improvement, exceptions, and then compliance. And so strengths, um, I mentioned a couple. Is there any that anybody else would like to add from our discussion last week? Well, I don't know if it's really a strength or a weakness, but I just want to say something. <laughs> and that is, I, I look at things a little, sometimes a little bit differently because of some of the things I'm involved with. And I, and I, I look at results, and obviously we're getting good results in many areas. But I also look at the process. And, and I know for a fact that what we're doing and what I've seen you know, in my years on this board is when we when we try a process and maybe it doesn't work we don't sit there and say well let's keep trying it we go with something different and i'm starting to see that the processes are working now they're not all where they need to be yet but they're still going forward and they are upward and the process is showing that they are trending upward and and the results i believe are going to follow in the year in the, the next few years so that's 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 what I'm at, you know. So strengths, weaknesses. It's hard to it's hard to pinpoint stuff and say, okay, well, this is and you know and, and pick on it and say this. You know, we need to do. I that. think that's a good. I think that's this is good this information. Is good difference. Yeah. You know, let's. You know, sometimes you just got to be patient with what you see is working, and just say, okay, let's let's ride this out for a little bit longer, and check and see. Like in the, in the math program, we haven't fully established. That that C C P M math correct? It's it's correct. It, we got what one one more year to tell it's fully implemented at the high school level. Yeah. So the intent is that it will go up through pre calc, um, and so then pre calculus, and then at that point we're going to evaluate. So okay, but it could it you could take another step potentially. You could potentially. Yeah. Okay, and that that's what I'm getting at. We're we're not we haven't fully implemented some of the processes yeah. that we're trying to judge you know so how can we say you know yeah and even then algebra 2 is in its first year this year mm -hmm. so okay. so anyways and that takes right. time we're, for we're moving into OE 11 a little bit so we got yeah, OE 11 is we got to cut this that. one first we got a, was that more oh, any okay. further discussion <laughs> on that <laughs> all all no good. exceptions noted <clears throat> um find ourselves in compliance I'd like to call for a motion to approve the results policy R2 academics performance. Uh, calling for a motion to approve it. Motion. We have a first and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next, uh, next one we need to look at is uh, well, we have it on the agenda, uh, mo February. monitoring district administrators' performance. Because of the workload that we had in December and January, we're going to move that one off to February. So, uh, 
the next one we move to um, OE 11 instructional programming and the instructional programming piece was actually more in depth than I would than the, than the unpacking of the um, of the report card. Um, each administrator, each administrator, and each each school um, went through and did a detailed report on the different curriculum that they're presenting, that they're utilizing. Um, the changes and, and improvements made, you know, the increase in AP courses, um, college preparatory courses, and, you know, based all the way down through the K through five curriculum with regards to the changes in the uh, reading. Readers, writers, workshop. Readers, writers, workshop. And the math. Bridges as yeah, well. Math is starting, yeah. yeah. Bridges program, which, you know, these are are proven programs and very exciting. Um, this curriculum work takes time and for me as a board member to read the work and body of work that's been done in this is truly, truly kind of humbling and um, I find this to be a strength to find the, you know, to observations um, you know, the strengths are, are, you know, at the high school level, working with mid-state, Stevens Point, and, you know, trying to, you know, look at what's the next step for our students and preparing, preparing them for secondary education, um, or technical school education. Um, having the mid-state courses at the school, we have kids, sophomores taking, um, mid-state accredited programs for welding. Is that a correct statement? That's correct. No. That's a pretty amazing thing that we have sophomores that are gaining mid-state credits. Some college credit, yeah. Yeah, isn't that something? Would that have happened 10 years ago? Mm. No. Well, we have sophomores taking AP courses, too. I mean, that's, that's amazing, too. Another. It's, we've been, families have come to us and told us that they've saved almost an entire year of college expenses by going through all of the, um, college preparatory for college accredited courses, is that a correct statement? That, the, that a freshman would generally take in their freshman year. They're able, they're able to do that while in high school. Is that fair to say? To a yeah, certainly extent. a semester. I mean, a certainly semester a semester, can, yeah. 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 Somebody very proud of. Um, any comments from anybody else, strengths, weaknesses? Yeah, I mean, I first of all, just wanted to congratulate all three principals on their work and everything that and producing these documents and everything that they've been doing the past previous years and, and this year. And um, just to highlight math and um, even the CPM math, they're in their third year, it sounds like from last week and all the readings that there's good support and resources going through that. So again, just congratulate uh, those three principals and all the work they've been doing in regards to that. <coughs> Leading edge. I think that, you know, we are finally, we're a district that is on the leading edge of, of where we want our curriculum to be and where our students want to be. So at this point, we know, identified a number of strengths, um, weaknesses, none, option, opportunities for improvement, none, um, compliance at this time has a promotion on the floor to accept OE 11. Uh, instructional programming. I'll push that more. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Again, our, our discussion there didn't do this justice, and I would welcome anybody to come in and, and really look at what we're doing for our students and the curriculum standards that we're, that we're utilizing. Um, a great body of work. Uh, the next one, uh, guiding principle, uh, board members covenant. Um, can I read that? You can please read that. All right. So board member covenants in order to build and maintain productive, effective relationships, board members shall maintain communication and interaction that builds upon mutual respect and trust, embodies civility and respects decisions made by the full board. Accordingly, 
Members will focus on issues, not people or personalities. Respect decisions of the full board. Exercise honesty in all communications. Make every reasonable effort to protect and promote the integrity and positive image of the district. And employ the following format to submit items they wish to have the board deliberate. Define the problem, propose a solution, and propose possible board action. Thank you, Terry. Observations. Our board is exceptional in the way that each of us can express our views. Even when we do not agree, which happens, we all have the same focus on the success of our district. Uh, the strengths, trust, and communication, each board member, Pat, you're one of you. You feel free to speak your mind when you want to. Oh, yeah. That's good. Cody, <laughs> David, you all have your voice. Yeah. And we want, you know, it's so important that each of you feel valued that your voice counts. Um, decisions by the board are respected, even when an individual may not agree. Um, anything to add, this was sent to all board members. There were no noted exceptions emailed back. Um, yeah. And we have had some meetings where we didn't agree, and uh, but we flushed we, it. But out. We flushed it out, and we all yeah. we all came yeah. to a conclusion at the end, and we're good. It we're wouldn't be good if we always agreed, would we? No. And and once we and once we decided as a board that was it. That's right. It was done, and I like that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Without that, I call for a motion to approve GP-9. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, and again, I just, I just really want to express that in the instructional programming and R2 unpacking that task, in the time period we have, we couldn't give it justice. We could spend easily three hours on each topic. Um, but we have so much to be proud of as a district. Um, at this point, we are at consent agenda. Um, Mr. Podolsky, would you mind doing donations? Yep. All right, uh, backpack for kids, $550 from Sacred Heart Collections. We have $20 from uh, the NHS food drive, $65 from Bethlehem uh, Women and Missions, $100 from HCE Homemakers, $240 from Jim and Sandy Quinn, and $200 from Jim Hustleman to NYA. And thank you very much to those donors um, helping out our students, community, and district. <coughs> Fantastic. At this time, I'd like to call for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, future agenda items. Uh, February 16th. It's actually the 13th and 13th. 18th. I'm sorry. That's fine. 13th, uh, February 13th is our board <coughs> workshop, and February 18th is our regular board meeting. Um, the school board convention will be occurring next week? Yes. Next, next week. week? Tuesday through Friday. Wednesday through Friday? Two, well, it's Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, because we have some, some meeting on Tuesday. Um, David, you're our WASB delegate. Yes. Um, what items are on the delegate's floor? Uh, there's one in fact I, I think a couple of these things men might be excited about. <laughs> um, well, then there's some excitement coming in. Look <laughs> <laughs> like get ready. Wake up with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, many school districts in our state uh, suffer from poverty, and the, the uh, members of the delegate. Assembly will be taking up an issue on poverty. Uh, what they're proposing is to convert all people that all students that have uh, free or reduced meals to go from one FTE to 1.2 FTE, which could generate considerable funds for school districts like ours that have uh, a lot of kids on um, food. 
uh, free and reduced meals. Another thing that they will be pre presenting is the changing the um, method of delivering the funds from the state. I, we, how do you do it now? You get several different payments, but they're in different proportions. It's ridiculous. And they're going to go. I think it's. I think if I remember right, they want to go. They want to change it to 25, 25, 25, 25. So you get an even proportion of funding several times a year instead of a bunch at one time and then not so much another time. Mm -hmm. So that'll help us too mm -hmm. to, to do our. So we won't have to do so much borrowing. Yeah. No, there's a few other ones that I thought were a little bit ridiculous, but. Those are the and two that we're looking at. These are the ones you're pushing for. Yeah. 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 I'd like to thank you for your work on that, Mr. Schmidt. Um, it's it gets it's very interesting because some of these some of these people that propose these uh, uh, proposals here are very very passionate about what they put into it. They get in there and they start talking about it. They'll get uh, Worked up. Worked up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's it up. Worked up. almost like the Democrat or Republican. Yeah, it's almost like that. Yeah. Yes. Which is going on today, yeah. yeah. Or no, that Democratic yeah. convention. Well. Not the convention, so, but yep. debate, the debate. Anyway. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Schmidt. Sure. And we also, for next month, we're we'll be looking at OE12 discipline and GP10 conflict of interest. Um, the referendum discussion will continue to be part of our monthly meeting. Um, we have the second Friday count coming up. That's the second Friday of January. January. It was last Friday, yeah. Okay, I hope everybody came on Friday. Was there any snow or anything? <laughs> no, I don't think so. If we didn't have any snow, that's good, because we wanted kids here. Um, academic Excellence Scholarship, Q12 Cultural Survey results from the staff, and Star College and OAN Fest, Achievement Gap Reduction, uh, Humpke, and the CWC contract. Um, we have a lot of work in front of us, gentlemen, but thank you for your time, you ladies and gentlemen, uh, the mother, the daughter and father team that joined us this evening. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward to being there on February 7th. Mm -hmm. I'm um, watching too again. Hey, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> your name's not a No. I'm ready. There you go. All right. I have a motion to adjourn. I got a call for the motion. You got a call for motion to adjourn. You got one. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. You made it. You made it.